Hello there, Internet. It's Mogwai here, and I got another Legends of Rune Terror video for you guys today. And today we are playing Grand Plaza. Now, before you just leave the video and leave a dislike and all that stuff, hear me out. I like Grand Plaza. I know there's been a lot of talk about Grand Plaza and landmarks and all that stuff as of late from both community members, streamers, content creators, and just players in general. Uh, I personally believe the addition of landmarks is absolutely essential for the long-term future of Legends of Runeterra. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that I believe the way it was done was particularly effective, right? Or well done in, in general. Like, I, I feel like you can very easily tell that landmarks are something that developers came up with after they set up the ground, uh, you know, core of uh, rules and mechanics of the game you know once they figured out how the game then in the future they they are like oh let's let's introduce this new card type right because there's a lot of aspects of landmarks that make them a little bit clunky you know the fact that they share the same mana as units the fact that uh, they have like they provide you with absolutely no tempo upon entry which makes them very difficult to balance because it seems like they're either amazing or absolutely terrible <laughs> and and there's a lot of aspects that I feel like, you know, Riot has quite a, a bit to figure out. You know, they got a lot of work to do for balancing landmarks and for designing more landmarks in the future. And I do also wish that interacting with landmarks was ultimately uh, less binary than it is now. Uh, the way they're designing landmark removal really reminds me of Gwent when they went homecoming with the artifacts. I think that was an atrocious idea, the artifacts in Gwent. And the way they handle that, and uh, this is kind of like, you know, it, it, it's it's revealing the red flags, or it's, I, I, I don't know how you express that. It's basically a red flag. Yeah, let's go with that. It's another red flag about that. So hopefully uh, they do, you know, we'll, we'll see how Riot handles this. But it, it is by no means perfect, and it, it, there is, like, you can't, even if you don't agree with certain things, you have to acknowledge why there is a discussion happening to begin with and why so many people feel a certain way, right? So I wanted to lead off the video with a bit of a ramble there. Sorry about that for those of you who are exclusively interested in the deck tech. Uh, I'm gonna showcase a deck that's not really anything new. It's just an upgraded version of an archetype that I've showcased a few uh, videos back, uh, a video called The Return of Hecarim. Here he is back at it again with your boy Lucian in one of my favorite new decks from the expansion the ephemeral grand plaza archetype this is the main reason why i think grand plaza is a fantastic card for the game it really does help uh ephemerals patch up their biggest weakness and there's a lot of very neat combos here as well uh, i'm also thinking about including relentless pursuit uh but as of now i'm really happy with vanguard redeemer i, I felt like the card draw has been really important but the the this still like subject to you know optimization right like we could still tweak things here and there but the idea is uh we have a much more efficient version than the one that we showcased before which was bruised by god's original build right I'm, i would have figured that he has also upgraded his uh now so we are running the pesky specter first of all which is came off like a bit of a meme card initially but it turns out to put in the massive work here because it is a zero mana unit and a zero mana 2-2 challenger can be really good with grand plaza and also allows us to do some really wacky things like if we have bark beast ravenous butcher and pesky specter on our opener hand we can play bark beast pesky specter well you, you would lead off with pesky specter first it doesn't make a difference though and then you ravenous butcher into the pesky specter and all of a sudden you have two three attack units going at it and you can apply a lot of pressure like deal six damage turn one onto the opponent forcing them to answer your current board by depleting their mana in the process as you set up your grand plaza and you start going for the kill in the mid game which is uh, pretty early to go for the kill but this deck is definitely capable of those crazy bursts right uh it is a little bit high rolly sometimes because you do want grand plaza and you do want to mulligan aggressively for grand plaza the majority of matchups if you don't have grand plaza in your hand full mulligan it's as simple as that uh, i know there is an argument for uh this not being a healthy sort of strategy in the game like revolving around one card so much but sometimes decks really revolve around one card and i think landmarks could be the type of card which you design your entire deck around. I'm also not the biggest fan of like all decks just being a bunch of like good stuff put together, you know? Like I like decks to be dependent on cards and I like synergies to have huge payoffs like this. And anybody who complain about it can go cry me a river because I think this is fantastic. Uh, I've been playing card games all my life 
And these things are, are very important in order for the game to not feel dull and vanilla, which is something that Legends of Runeterra has been uh, guilty of, like, in the past, before Rising Tides came out, right? So, uh, and slowly but surely, they're, they're, they're moving away from that direction. And Grand Plaza are the kind of steps you need to take in order to, you know, continue said path as we're running a full set of remembrance another card that i did not run last time i'm still running chronicler of ruin uh, i really love it but i think uh, Raven uh ravenous butcher should be the three of and uh, chronicler of ruin should be a two of i'm not playing curse keeper anymore i don't think he's ultimately necessary i think pesky Skep specter is just ultimately much much better in this deck because of how easier it is to enable the tempo and there's a lot of really neat things we can do with it grizzled ranger is still too good not to run with grand plaza but i do run him as a two of i don't run i like running I don't like drawing three copies of Grizzled Ranger, basically. I, I don't think that's ever a good thing, which is why I opt to go with the 2-2 split right here, uh, as the same can be said about Chronicler of Ruin. A lot of times, like, two is enough, and Vanguard Redeemer is a card that I'm, I'm a big fan of in this build because it can allow us to continue to, you know, uh, fish for our units. It thins our deck, and it helps us draw alongside a full set of Glimpse Beyond, as he is also very easy to enable in this deck particularly. And that is the deck list right there. Shoutouts to Remembrance. Uh, this card is very easy to get down to like a lot of times like zero mana because of cards like Haunted Relic. I always think it's like Ancient Relic. It's Haunted Relic. Maybe. <laughs> and uh, Onslaught of Shadows amongst others. We don't play Shark Chariot anymore. I think that I think it's unnecessary. I think that card uh, only it, it's kind of like win more, right? Uh, if you have Grand Plaza, it's amazing. If you don't, it's atrocious. And I don't think the archetype needs it at all. This is, in my opinion, the better version of this archetype, at least for my playstyle, the one that I've had the most success with. And uh, if you want to find, like, you know, a really legit version of uh, Lucian Hecarim, then I highly recommend this one. Obviously, I'm biased, but uh, I really do think highly of it. And that's all I got to say. Today's deck tech is a little bit longer than it should have been because I rambled quite a bit. But I think I... I start off uh, a very interesting discussion, right? Because we've seen the other side of the coin, right? Like, we've even seen... I haven't seen Swim's video, but uh, from the TLDR that I got from certain posts on Reddit, like, he seems to be having some issues with Landmark Designer. And I do agree there are some issues. But ultimately, I do believe they are great for the game, and I'm excited for them to print more. And uh, I'm also excited them for to slightly nerf Grand Plaza, just not make it, you know, be the, th the card to play in every Demacia deck under the sun and uh, have it more for decks like this, and then it'll be perfect. So that's basically the end of my rant. Thank you for watching. Enjoy the matches. Tomorrow's New Year, so hopefully you're gearing up for that. And yeah, love ya. I'll see you around. All right, here we go. I tanked my rank earlier. I, I, today's video was supposed to be the the arrow the tracker deck that I've, I've been designing but uh it it underperformed a little bit i also misplayed a little bit with it but i gotta go back to the drawing board so uh hopefully i'll have it ready for tomorrow like i'm bulk recording in case you guys don't know so it probably doesn't make much sense to you but uh yeah today we're we're supposed to play that but we're gonna play this deck instead i know grand plaza is something you guys have been are getting pretty tired of, but honestly, I love the card. I think the card is too strong. I think it should be nerfed, but I, I love how the card works, and I love playing with it. It's super fun. Just because something is popular doesn't mean it's just ultimately toxic, you know? Obviously, it's too strong, but that can be fixed. Um, I'm gonna... Honestly, I'm gonna drop just the Rekindler, and I'm, I'm gonna keep the single combat even. Uh, I don't even mind having the Rekindler, especially with double champion in my hand. Like, this is looking pretty neat. A spacey sketcher lead. As our opponent is playing a mono target deck, like, Still no splash whatsoever. So we know they're playing the Mount Descriers as they, they discard a Lunari Priestess. Sorry. I hate his voice. I'm, I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot. That was obvious he was gonna do that. He's playing Diana. I'm like, don't don't play too fast. Like this is the problem with being a YouTuber, man. Like you, like sometimes I'm just like, man, I'm I'm misplaying like crazy, all the time. But then it's just like I'm I'm talking a lot, and apparently I I can't talk and do that at the same time. Let's take the hit. Uh, 
cloaked in silver light. Honestly, I could have even waited for there. Like, I I, I kind of played the, spe the the pesky specter a little bit too early. We're gonna be using this. No combat. Uh, Seal combat is pretty much the only thing I played, right? And haunted relic. Okay. Even though Chronicler of Ruin would be more valuable on something like a Rekindler, I need to actually like deal with this board. So I need the 4-4 stat line to deal with this. I need to slow him down significantly. These pesky specters as blockers are really neat. Right down to five. You gonna play Hecarim now? Play Rekindler. And then we play Double Pesky Spectre. <laughs> what? Daddy? This is why I love Spec Pesky Spectre, man. Like, you can build up some, some crazy tempo here. I want to keep this alive. So this is the plan, and this is the power of like, especially like, people talk a lot about Grand Plaza, right? People talk a lot all about Grand Plaza. People don't talk about enough is Lucian's level up. Like, this guy's dead because of Lucian's buff. I'll bring the peace. I'll bring the peace. Because now I can use, this is why Ravenous Butcher, by the way, is really good in this archetype. Like, even though this is like, uh, a pretty meta deck. It, it hasn't. It's taken a while for it to be fully optimized. There's, there's several different versions of it, and I'm a big believer in Ravenous Butcher and Pesky Spectre for this situation, in particular. <laughs> Got him. OTK, baby. <laughs> Was waiting for it. All right, let's let's get a little bit of our rank back. We were in Diamond Three, like I said, I, I I lost quite a few in a row trying out that deck, but it'll be ready for tomorrow, hopefully. Let's go for another one. Okay, Fiora Shen. We got the Grand Plaza. They have no removal for Grand Plaza actually, which is fantastic. Uh, I like Hecarim, but it may be a little bit too early to have it in my hand. I like the Vanguard Redeemer. So I'm gonna keep everything else. I love seeing Lucian there. And Remembrance. Another card that I really want to highlight in this archetype. This card is phenomenal. There's a chill in, a the, chill air. in the air. I just gotta be patient, I think. 
I have so many tools, but they will be so much stronger when Grand Grand Plaza hits the board, yeah. Bring in the heat. I could work for the Lucian level up, though. That's like the one upside to this. The problem is... Nah. This is mercy. I just don't think it's worth it, right? It could also have Nobify, so for now, let's just attack. River shape the land and give it life. Let's drop Grand Plaza. If my opponent does find a way to deal with Vanguard Redeemer. I walk this space between worlds. I do like the idea of using Haunted Relic to level up uh to level up Lucian. I find them unworthy. I'm gonna go for the Ravenous Butcher to get the immediate level up with with Lucian. Even if my opponent does manage to remove Lucian here with like a single combat or a concerted strike, I already got the level up. Uh, obviously, I want him to stay alive so I can threaten him with multiple rallies, but keeping Ravenous Butcher here is really important. Because Ravenous Butcher is a way. We each defend our brethren. Now we go for the Haunted Relic. They go for a Nopify. We're gonna try it again. As they go for a Deny. Well. Now we punish. Beautiful. God, Lucian is amazing now. Burn away the shadows. My life for these lands. Whoa. Someone is living on the limit though. Oh, this is sexy as hell. Ah, uh, no, not anymore. It's not sexy as hell anymore. Um, I want to, I want to discourage him from attacking. There's no way for us to enable the uh, the rally. Like he's gonna attack immediately. Uh, I would like to have something down, but I also really want to be able to grizzled ranger next turn. I don't want to take a free, like, I, I want to make sure that, that he can't attack with anything. I think I can just drop this, to be fair. Because next turn I'm going to do all this. Pretty clutch of him, but there's not much we could have done there. If I had a glimpse beyond, but I mean, he could have he could have had a counter as well. Slow down, will you? Now we play Grizzled Ranger. Grizzled Ranger with Grand Plaza is pretty insane, and we just got to do our very best to ensure like a lethal here. Water changes, but never breaks. So the first thing we shall do is attack like this. Eliminate one blocker. Die in the process. It's important for us to die. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Grizzled Ranger. You're actually a really cool character. You're one of the coolest like followers in the game. But I need you to go down, brother. He could have a, a deny here.
Right now, we're representing lethal. Alright. Banish the unworthy! I don't understand, like, how he's gonna stop. Yeah. <laughs> like, my, my rating guardian survives uh, a concerted strike, so. Ah, th th there's no chip. Miguel! Miguel! There's no champion left. That game was a really big highlight of, a really solid highlight of Lucian. Now, again, again, I wanna address everybody who just, like, will be complaining about not only this deck, but about me playing this deck because all of a sudden it's, like, really meta and they're tired of Grand Plaza, Grand Plaza everywhere. I get it. I understand your frustration, all right? But the problem with Grand Plaza, like I mentioned prior, and this is something that I really want to clarify in this video, especially like on, on today, which will be the 30th of December, I want to make this very clear. Grand Plaza is a good card, in my opinion, of course. Like I know, I know Swim posted, I haven't seen his video, but I, I know he posted a, um, a video talking about uh, landmarks in general, right? I, I did like read some TLDRs from like, you know, Reddit posts and stuff like uh, basically like th that he was saying that Grand Plaza is a build around and that you have to like mulligan aggressively for it because if you don't draw it, then your deck is uh, completely worthless. I think uh, those claims are a little bit exaggerated. I think a deck like this works well, like can actually do really well without Grand Plaza, but there's no denying the fact that Grand Plaza is a very vital component to this deck. Now, I don't think that is necessarily a bad thing. I think, uh, like I said, we need more card, like we need more card types in this game. I don't think just having units and spells until the, the I don't know, until like forever, or till the, uh, the what's the expression? I, I forgot about it. I, I don't think, I don't think that's a good thing. Uh, because I think the game will ultimately become dull in, in time, right? I think landmarks are super exciting and uh, it's something that's fresh, fresh. Fresh, I was gonna say brand new and fresh at the same time. Fresh for the game, which uh, is really, really important, right? Uh, Grand Plaza is clearly overpowered. I think it, it would be nice to start off with just taking away the plus one health boost. The plus one health boost is completely unnecessary, and I think they really missed the mark. It is a little bit concerning uh, when it comes to like their design team, though, because uh, them releasing Grand Plaza in its current state really... Um, Honestly, like I don't want to be that guy, but it, it it really does hit the credibility of the of the design team. I don't know if it's it, I don't think the balance team, but actually like the the set design team because they can't be making cards like these uh, without noticing how ridiculous they are, right? And like all the crazy synergies and everything. Uh, I don't know. I, I I really think this card should never have been printed like this. But hey, hindsight is twenty twenty. Whatever. Regardless. I love the fact that this card enables uh, archetypes like this, and I think the Hecarim archetype will be fine after that nerf because the plus one health is not something Ephemerals truly need, except it comes into play for like surviving stuff like Twisted Fate and Withering Whale, etc. Right? But yeah, that that was a bit of a you know bit of a speech. Sorry if you guys just want to see gameplay and didn't want to hear all this, but I, I think it's very very important to know. I think Grand Plaza is a great card for the game. The fact that Ephemerals are finally viable is something that I absolutely love. Lucian and Hecarim in the same deck, that's just fucking orgasmic. And please don't take that away from me because people are just crying all day. No. It's a, it's busted. Tone it down. But do not redesign or do not like, just just calm, calm your tits. Card is, you know, card is good for the game. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. Let's Go, let's actually go for a match. Ooh, could this be? Could this be my, my Monastery of Verona list? Oh, this is a great opener. This is a fantastic opener, actually. I'm gonna drop uh, these two. Yes! Yu-Gi-Oh! I don't care if I have another Bark Beast in my hand. This is another reason why Pesky Spectre is so good. Look at this shit. Look at this shit, baby. Three, four damage, turn one. Yep, yep, yep. Yep, yep, yep.
dragon approaching. Now I'm going to go for an Onslaught of Shadows. Shark Chariot is like really unnecessary in this deck. In case any, any, any of you are wondering, like I, I don't think it's necessary at all. It helps up level up Hecarim a little bit easier, but we have a full set of both like ephemeral spawn effects. Oh, that would have been nice to have earlier, but... What are you gonna do? My opponent has like seven mana here. We're gonna keep that in mind. Uh, this could be a TF turn. Lost a fair game. All right. Eyes open. We're gonna let him like attune before doing anything. I wanna carry over this mana. Oh. Probably should have dropped Lucian. I out on Lucian here, but... Oh... Um... Nine? How did he gen... Uh... No, he's actually playing Recall. Yeah, this is definitely my deck, I think. 100%. Uh... This is fine, though. I mean, sure, I, I I miss out, but I get to preserve my. This is okay. It's a lot of damage. I'm really surprised that he didn't want to. Like, he, he must be working. But the thing is, like, if he if he if his win condition is mind melt, he just does, has not done enough. Like, we've had too too fast of an opening, and this Hecarim is just really devastating here. I'm gonna go for a single combat. My opponent could have an answer here. But I want to get the answer out of him. So now I know. Now I know. That I can play Hecarim and I can attack him from the kill. Okay. Cool story. We are going in. Could have dropped the, uh, the Lucian. Uh, cause, especially because he could have some uh, eyes of the dragon. How many? How many is that? One or two? Why are you oh, here? that's none. <laughs> I was convinced. Uh, I mean, I don't know why he didn't forfeit there because if he if he deep meditations. Yeah. Uh, really like that archetype. Um, unfortunately, Grand Plaza is the worst matchup because uh, right now, Bilgewater Ionia has no real reliable answer to Landmark. That's one of the problems with Landmark design as well. Like, I don't like how binary the removal for them are. I, I kind of wish you were able to interact with Landmarks in a different way. Uh, kind of how like you interact with Planeswalkers in Magic the Gathering, right? Like, if there was a more universal way to deal with them, but it would require investment and resources, right? Uh, I just feel like right now, I don't know, like... There's certain regions that can't really handle them, right? Which is which also attributes even more to Grand Plaza's dominance in the, in the meta, for sure. So the, these are things that the, the, the dev team has to figure out, right? And uh, I, I'm just not so sure how good they actually are, you know? Like, I, I know the live balance team is great, but... I mean, this set is amazing, right? But there, there have been some, some balance concerns, right? Like some cards seem, you know. Again, I, I just don't, don't think Grand Plaza could ever have been printed like that after testing. But what do I know? I'm rambling. Let's let's go for it. <laughs> this is just a Grand Plaza rambling video. <laughs> like I like the card, but I, I talk so much about it, it seems like I hate it. You know, it's it's kind of it's kind of odd. Radamat. 
is playing what seems to be pirate aggro. We got the the pesky specter there. We're into a full mulligan. Because uh, in a matchup like this, we really value Plaza. I mean, <laughs> we value Plaza always. What the fuck? But especially in like a fast-paced matchup like this, like they're gonna have like plays from turn one onwards. Uh, ideally, they don't have a one drop, but that leads me to believe that they have multiple one drops. So, at least we know that cards like um, Ancient Relic or Haunted Relic. Like, I, I always mix up that that card's name. Don't get in my way. Yeah, but this this uh, this Grand Plaza into Grizzled Ranger will really help me get back into it. But unfortunately, I am vulnerable to another big hit next turn. But I do like the fact that I'm playing Grand, like I, I'm attacking on turn two. Like when you're playing Grand Plaza, you, you, you'd rather have it like this. Unless you're able to carry over mana and set up a... No room for doubt. And set up a... a haunt. I'm going to go with ha Haunted Relic. I'm going to go with Haunted Relic. Nothing like the stink of blood and sweat. Dude, Haunted Relic. Where are you at? Let's get to it. A lot of damage. We're going to be playing Grand Plaza. And we're going to lose Lucian. Alright, down to 11. Not ideal. But... Ah, man. Alright, let's mess some folks up. Here we go. Never lost a fair game. All that glitters. I gotta make use of this plaza as much as I can. Uh, it really sucks that I couldn't find my ephemeral cards because they would have made this matchup significantly easier. I'm gonna play a Bark Beast. I definitely do want to play Hecarim next turn alongside this. So I'm just gonna pass here. We have Nox and Guillotine. The idea, though, is that we will be able to, to set up Remembrance. We'll be targeting this so we get the most amount of damage on him. And by attacking like this, we also enable a zero mana remembrance. Give me that Raiding Guardian. Atta boy! The problem is they get to steal our Grand Plaza. Which is uh, kind of nutty, but we do have... The flames, the me. Well, this can't attack, so... Do they have... Um... Man, if I, if I lose because of this Grand Plaza, I'm going to be pissed. Time on with or without you. Let me pass here. Are you serious? You have Game Plank and you have the way to enable... Let them 
I'm gonna lose because of Grand Plaza. Like, because his black market merchant took took my Grand Plaza. That's actually nutty because otherwise I would have been able to block with this. Ah! Ah! Oh! <laughs> oh! Hackerim! Hopefully they fix Hackerim's bug, man. His voice lines used to be, uh, well, pretty be heavy. Level up! Rank and honor retained. Regained. English. That was. Yeah, that was frustrating because I actually was gonna lose. Like, I was I was about to say, that's how you lose with this deck, right? You, you, you get your Grand Plaza stolen. That was, like, really clutch, actually. Like, the fact that I, I, I set up that Chronicler of Ruin to, to survive on one health, that was insane. That was super clutch. To be fair, we got lucky with the Remembrance, right? But that, that really highlights why this card is so damn needed, this deck. And that was quite a few games, honestly. Like, even though uh, we've been at it for, like, 35 minutes, it it, it seems like we would have had, like, two or three, but we've had, like, at least four, right? Like, four games, I think. Pretty sure that was four, because we started at, um... Was it four? <laughs> now, now I'm not sure. Maybe it's just three. Uh, I don't even know anymore. But, yeah, my very fried. This is, like, the fourth video I recorded the same day, so... And I have to, like you know, prepare all these decks prior and everything. Cause it may seem like this is just like, you know, oh, just the standard deck, but this is my approach at it, right? Like I, I didn't copy anybody's deck for this. Like I made my own version. I optimized it uh, looking back into the prior version and I'm very, very happy with it. Uh, so even even this deck took me like quite a while to, to build. And uh, I say that because, you know, I want to give you guys, or I want you guys to give Pesky Pete some love by leaving a like in the video down below. You know, Pesky Pete will know, and he will adore you for it. And that's all I have to say. My brain is is pretty uh pretty done at this point, yeah. I, I think I, I can't, I, I, I need to chill for a bit. <laughs> I've been playing all day, so yeah, I'm, I'm gonna leave it at that. Uh, this will be the 30th, so tomorrow I gotta, uh, there's still three more videos that I gotta get ready for you guys uh, tomorrow onwards, but. I feel like I'm actually going to be able to pull it off, so nice. Leave a like for the effort. I'll stop talking and asking for likes all the fucking time. Love ya. Have a soul day. I'll see you tomorrow.